And I'll say just in a nutshell what it is here is that basically we're monitoring small molecule processes and materials, which we can use as a process monitor by embedding a sensor in the material and sending a very fast pulse down to the sensor, looking at what comes back, and we can in interpret this, and what it gives us is provides molecular rotation uh, information for materials research and or process monitoring applications. Uh, and process monitoring is what we've been particularly focused on. We can provide process monitoring information using inexpensive single-use sensors, such as in concrete or composite uh, mon uh, cure sensors, where basically the sensor is destroyed in the process of using it, but we can cut it off and throw it away. And by doing the TDR approach, we have an option of two different ways of looking at our results here. We can either look at it uh, directly as a transient, which is the way we capture the data, or we can do the mathematical Fourier transform and get a high-grade scientific, uh, what's called permittivity spectrum for laboratory-grade analysis. So we basically have the ability to, to jazz it up for the laboratory or dumb it down for field use. Uh, and uh, let's see, I'm over here. Okay, the applications that we have in here, the market opportunity, two that we've worked in a lot in is monitoring concrete cure. And what we're going after there, the small molecule that's, that's acting in, the, in concrete cure, is the water molecule, combining with calcium and silicate to form the hydrate, which is the hard stuff all around us. And of course, there we're able to provide information on the degree to which that reaction has taken place, the degree of hydration, which would relate to strength, uh, effective additives uh, on the concrete cure, uh, another application we've been looking at is monitoring of aerospace composites. Uh, there, the small molecule that's acting is the epoxy mo molecule uh, in aerospace composites where we can provide them information on viscosity, uh, percent cure, cure rate, those sorts of things. Uh, I know there's a lot of opportunity. We haven't pursued as much in biological systems uh, where you can look at free and bound water in biosystems, proteins, cell structures, etc and some high-tech applications I know that are out there, ferroelectric, sol gels, liquid crystals. Uh, these are all research applications, I would say, would we, we would use the high-grade Fourier transform analysis, but some applications we've been involved with for field monitoring where we use a very simplified form of TDR, which is this little box, is monitoring of strength development in uh, concrete. We've done some plant testing there. Uh, obviously, if you're putting the first floor in on the the Freedom Tower in New York, you want to know that the critical strength is, is what it needs to be. Uh, an application we've done some field testing on is monitoring uh, precast development in the plant uh, using this uh, so that the operator knows when they can take the molds off and reuse them because that's a, a time saver. Uh, with composite, we've been involved with some of the aerospace manufacturers monitoring the development of panels for helicopters. Uh, and getting the cure optimization right, getting the right material properties they want. Uh, I've from time to time looked at some groundwater monitoring applications, which I know is important in third world areas. Uh, the actual what things look like here is we have our laboratory research system that we really don't make the TDR instrumentation. We recommend that from a third party. Uh, I have here a uh, Hewlett Packard or an Agilent TDR oscilloscope, we would like to get one that's a little simpler uh, than that. But we have a third party TDR oscilloscope. We basically are making the acquisition and analysis software and providing the support for, for the use of it. And of course, our capacitance sensors, which are the, the, the probe that actually goes in the material. The field system uh, is the miniature USB run TDR sampler. Uh, this thing has the full 20 gigahertz bandwidth with a 35 picosecond, that's a millionth of a millionth of a second uh, interrogation, uh, which we could private label and resell for field use. Uh, again, our acquisition and analysis software and our capacitance sensors, that's sort of the package. Uh, the uh, uh, risk assessment here, some, well, we've had some, some issues with maintaining a uniform sensor concrete uh, contact with the concrete because as it cures, it shrinks and mechanically can tear loose. Uh, we'd like to identify lower cost TDR vendors. Uh, financial, certainly staffing, I'm primarily it with uh, outsourcing to machine shops and hire, having technician help and student help with me as needed. Market, certainly we need marketing expertise. Uh, customers. Uh, research laboratories I sort of put first, and that's a small market, but the feedback that you get from that is essential to go further. Uh, the types of customers we have, uh, university, obviously university institutes on, 
uh, concrete uh, cement optimization. Uh, we had some bio, uh, bioelectric institutes. Uh, types of governments, of course, are going to be university research labs. Uh, government for concrete, there's certainly NIST, uh, FHWA have large concrete labs, DOT. Uh, industry, Grace uh, makes additives for concrete use, Schlumberger, uh, oil, uh, oil drilling fluids characterization, uh, Halliburton, I should say that's Halliburton. Uh, I've done a number of consulting jobs for biotech companies, which is something that intrigues me. Uh, we can get an idea of the market size from just going to Google Scholar and looking at the number of publications per year. And of course, if people are publishing work, uh, they have to be buying the equipment to do the work. So that can give us a, an idea of the, the market size there. And most of these are limited to low frequency measurements because most of the researchers involved shy away from high frequency. They view it as a little bit intimidating and even though it can provide useful information, they, tr they try to avoid it. Uh, I should point out at this point, just with sort of our mild marketing, we have sold three packages of our software uh, to uh, both private companies and uh, universities. Obviously, the larger market down the road would be QCQA testing facilities. Uh, for an old SBIR, we did an estimate for concrete testing. If we took a concrete testing lab where they have to take side samples uh, and monitor them as the building is, is constructed, uh, we estimated about 3,000 uh, independent testing labs for just verifying concrete strength. Uh, precast fabrication plants where we had done some field testing, we estimate to be about 6,000. Uh, certainly composite prototyping and manufacture. It's a little difficult to get in directly on the composite manufacture because the, the aerospace manufacturers don't want sensors in the bulk of their material because it constitutes a defect. Uh, Certainly, there are other uh, process monitoring uh, applications we could have there. Uh, the concrete industry, customer problems, certainly uh, monitoring strength development in critical structures is one of their uh, big problems, maximizing th throughput in precast fabrication. Uh, the composites industry, their main problem is optimizing autoclave cure control uh, and monitoring structural flaws in process and in service. Uh, the shuttle accident of several years ago, uh, had they had sensors at the right part, probably could have detected uh, damage uh, a little earlier in service. Uh, other applications, again, I'm sensing this from just the, the, the uh, consulting work that I get, characterizing biological processes and pharmaceuticals, uh, characterizing other materials, ferroelectrics, liquid crystals, nanomaterials. Uh, the value proposition here really basically amounts to providing the researcher additional high frequency information which he currently avoids. Uh, you reduce the added cost uh, uh, of a, like a vector network analyzer, you get that under control, you, you minimize the added complexity. The time domain approach is a little bit more intuitive in the way that you can window out uh, what's the sensor response and what is uh, extraneous artifacts in the connecting lines. And I just took a, something I just searched on, on Google Books here. They talk about compared to the high number of publications dealing with dielectric behavior in bulk polymeric system, dielectric data and solutions are rare. And the reason is the very limited equipment in this area. So TDR is presenting a low cost solution which could expand researchers in this area with an intuitive interface. Uh, intellectual property, we have one standing patent on uh, concrete hydration uh, monitoring. Uh, of course, we have a proprietary sof software and algorithm so source code. Uh, our competition, uh, as far as dielectric spectroscopy, uh, really amounts to the vector network analyzer. And these are pretty sophisticated instruments costing about $120,000 a piece. And you can get a TDR scope for about $40,000. So we have quite a, a cost advantage for this particular application. Uh, over going with the, the VD, VNA. Uh, our competitors, of course, non-dielectric methods, this is our dielectric competitor, non-dielectric methods or any other method you could think of for monitoring concrete cure or composite cure. Uh, with concrete, you have things called maturity meters, which are time and temperature, uh, a, a temperature sensor which uh, gets a time and temperature profile and interprets concrete strength from that. Uh, you have mechanical test methods, compressive strength, uh, ultrasonic and other methods. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. 
Uh, with composite, you have laboratory methods of monitoring the rheology, the viscosity of the material in real time, or monitoring exotherms when certain reactions go on. Uh, the competitive advantage that we have uh, as far as uh, for, for dielectric spectroscopy is we're definitely much lower cost than the traditional vector network analyzer. Uh, we have what we think is a far more less intimidating, more intuitive interface is that the response of the system comes back as an echo to a pulse. You send a pulse out, the echo comes back, and you're seeing directly there the response, you're not looking at a lot of phase shifts as you vary a frequency and standing waves set up in a line between the, the pulsar and the, and the sensor. So I think we present a more intuitive interface. We have some pretty unique uh, analysis algorithms I'm working on right now. Uh, flexible bandwidth uh, versus non-dielectric non methods, comparing with non-dielectric methods. Uh, in dielectric work, we're basically using electrode. It's basically two sides, two metal surfaces in contact with the material. That is inherently pretty low cost and makes it practical for throwaway type applications, concrete and composite, where the sensor isn't going to be reused after the, the process is complete. Uh, we have the ability to put sensors at specific locations. If you use a beam method uh, to monitor cure of a material, your sensed area is the beam path. And of course, we're putting a sensor at a specific area in the interior of the material so we can choose the area that we're sensing. And again, I say low sensor cost goes with the fact that an electrode sensor is, is inherently pretty simple. Uh, so I guess that's, that's it. Questions? <laughs>